Daz community. This is not from this world and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. Now this week I was trying to think of something interesting to talk about and it occurred to me that a little while ago I got a comment on my Daz Studio hotkeys and keyboard shortcut video from Jiri6605 who asked me about textures. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. Now, first of all, in Daz Studio, there are plenty of shaders that you can purchase and then use on your different props. So uh, you can see, you know, they're not usually that expensive. They kind of range from about $5 up to about 20 or 25. And you can get all these different various shaders you can add to a prop. Now, honestly, there are several ways we can go about doing this. And a lot of them I've already mentioned in some of my other videos. Uh, the first thing that we can do is add an LIE to our prop. And you can find that in this video about LIEs that I made. So if you're interested in going back and checking that out, you can do that. Or you can find the textures of your prop, go into a program like GIMP, and add those textures directly to the texture files and just make an entirely new texture map for your item. Those are all kind of a, an option. It may take a little longer, but you get kind of permanent results. Or we can deal with these shaders. Now, uh, for this video, I wanna talk about the shaders specifically. So I have Milica here, and she's just kind of in a basic scene. And I have her holding a vase of flowers just so we can kind of play around with these different shaders. Now to get started with shaders, first of all, I think it's important to realize that Daz Studio comes with some shaders that you can just kind of mess with. And you can find them here under the Daz Studio formats. Just click on that, go to my Daz 3D library, click on that, and then scroll down until you find shader presets. And we've used this before in some other videos. But if you look, I have some downloaded. But if you go to iRay and then iRay Uber, you're going to see that there are some shaders that already are included in your DAS. So, for example, there's metal, aluminum, cobalt, copper, gold. Um, so this is really pretty cool. And you can just use these shaders right into your scene. You know, one of the things that we keep doing when we're making things like lights, uh, ghost lights, that kind of thing, is I have been going back to this emissive. This is a shader. And so if you've seen me do this in other videos, I'm just using a shader. And so let's, uh, let's play around with these shaders a little bit. I'm gonna click on Milica here, and we're just gonna select her clothing which is this um, SU strapless dress. So I'm gonna click on it in my scene tab and then go hit surfaces and then just make sure you have it selected in surfaces. And then we can play around with this shader. It's kind of important to realize that a lot of times when we mess with things like this, especially textures, if you are in your texture view, the texture shaded view, which is usually where I work, you may or may not see a whole lot of changes until you go to NVIDIA iRay. But let's just see what happens here. I've got this selected. Let's just choose Jade just for fun. I don't even know what this is going to do. But I'm going to select Jade. Ooh, I better not select Jade. Okay, we won't select Jade because it made her dress almost transparent and I don't want to get in trouble with with YouTube. So let's try Silk Blue here. We're gonna just click on the Silk Blue and you can see it just changes her immediately to Silk Blue. So you have some shaders already built in. 
Now let me also show you some of these shaders that you can buy. So I bought a shader from Daz Studio and when you purchase one of these, you are going to find it in this same folder that your Daz Uber's in. So in this case, the one I purchased is called the MMX Nylon and Satin. This gives us a lot of different options. Now the first thing I need to do is make sure that my object I want to change, which is the dress, is selected in my scene tab and in my surface tab. And then I'm going to, in this case, it says I need to apply this base first. So I'm going to do that. And it gives this weird O kind of texture to her dress. And this is strictly a texture view because if I go to iRay, you're going to see that it is a solid color. So just remember that some of the things that you see in your texture view is not what actually is going to render. And I think this messes some people up. But um, let's just go back to texture, keep us out of eye ray for a few minutes because my computer gets noisy. But if you look at this, we have a lot of different choices. We have um, opacity, we have color, shine, tiling, and then patterns. And so this is actually a really cool set of shaders. All right, now what we're gonna do to play with this is let's just go into iRay mode and we're just gonna kind of mess with this. So you can see when it went into iRay mode just a minute ago, she kind of has a solid black dress on. If I select a different shader, we are going to change the opacity. So I can change the opacity by selecting these. Now I'm not gonna go down to the bottom opacity because it's gonna make her dress see-through and we can't have that in YouTube. But you can change the opacity. Now this is kinda cool but I could change the opacity in a couple other ways as well where I don't need this tab. Another cool thing is color of course. So this particular set of shaders comes with a lot of different colors. So I could make her dress um, a variety of different colors. Let's make it green, for example. So I can just select whatever color I want, make it that color. So it has a whole array of different colors. Pretty cool. I can also determine the shine of this material. So I can go all the way down from zero all the way up to 100%. So let's just click on this and see what it does. You can see it just made her dress very shiny. Also, uh, the tiling is going to start at 100 and it goes up to 1000. So let's just click on that and see what happens. The fabric tiling, I think, gives you how many little weaves of fabric, perhaps, that you can see within that dress. And then what's cool is we've got these different patterns. So if I hit patterns, I can select a pattern and this particular shader comes with quite a few patterns. And then I can increase the pattern strength. So if I increase it to like 100%, it makes this really cool pattern on her dress. So this is something really easy that you can mess with. These shaders are, are pretty straightforward. And so this is an example of a purchased one. Now what's cool is if you are done with this and you want to go back to your original dress, all you have to do is find that product in your menu and then just go back to one of its original textures. So in this case, this dress is in my Daz Genesis 8 female figure under clothes and dresses. I just have to scroll down. It's the strapless SU dress. So see now I can just go back with that selected and I can go back to the original dress. And you all know that um, there's different materials that you can use within your prop. So basically your shaders are just doing the same thing. Another thing we can do with the textures, and I might have shown you this in a different video, but we can select our dress. We can go to surfaces 
and then just select your dress and go down to base and you're gonna see base color and you've got a map that shows you the textures that are on the dress right now. If I select that box and go to browse, it's going to open up the tab that has all of the different textures for the dress. Now I have a texture file folder on my computer that I use for all kinds of stuff. And if I scroll down, you may have remembered I've used this blue plaid texture that um, I found off the internet and I can just select that and see it changes that texture as well. So your shaders can change props, whatever, but so can your surface maps. And so that's just another example of how we can do this. So really, by using this kind of a, a deal, there are infinite ways that you can change the appearance of a prop or clothing. And see, we can do it even with the, the vase here. That's why I have her holding a vase, is if I select the vase and just go to the vase's uh, texture under the surface, I'm just gonna select base. See, it gives me the color and texture map for the vase. If I just click on that picture, I can go to browse and it's going to show me all the different ones that the product came with. Of course, I can go to my saved texture map and I can make this vase any texture I want. Now, you know, there is some issues perhaps with seams and matching you have to think about, but generally this is really pretty easy. We can also change the vase's shaders the same way that we changed her clothes. So if I go down to my shader preset folder, I can add any kind of shader that I want to this vase. So if I want the vase to be this midnight blue, I can just click on it. I think the key to this is making sure that you have whatever you wanna change selected in your scene and in the surface tab. And then you just have to realize that what you do is gonna be different in your texture shaded view than it will be in your eye ray view. So let's set up Milica here. I'm gonna change, let's, let's choose one of those nice shaders for her dress. We're gonna go back and change this. All right, now you can see that she has a really cool looking dress on. So this kind of shows you what the whole thing looks like. And so I hope that helps you with shaders. They're not hard, you just gotta kinda play around with them. The ones that you buy, just add them into your scene. Just remember that you may need to keep it on the iRay preset and that you have to always have your surface tab selected what you want. All right, so I'm gonna just set her up. Kind of like this camera a little bit better than that close one. So I'm gonna just set this up and let's do a quick render and see what we get. I hope this kind of helped and answered your questions. And uh, let me know if you have some better tips on shaders or just some things that you use when you're playing around with shaders. So little crash course here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and shoot me a comment or two. I love to hear from you. And until next time, have a wonderful day.